Six months ago, I visited Danny and Richard at the University of Chicago Hospital, <clears throat> a children's hospital. Danny was in really good spirits that day, and the three of us were playing this brilliant math-based derivative of Uno that they had devised. And considering who I was playing against, you can imagine I was having a hard time keeping up. Anyway, at one point in the game, and I can't really recall why, Danny turned to me very seriously, and he motioned to me like this. <laughs> And um, I thought about that a lot as I was driving home to Champaign that night, and even more so over the weeks to come. And then a couple of months later, when I saw Danny for the last time, we exchanged that signal wordlessly in the place of goodbyes. I'm inspired by the idea that somewhere in the universe, Danny watches over us still. Perhaps the best and greatest story of all time about the mysteries of the universe and about life, and about loss, and about love, is The Little Prince. It was two years ago this week that Danny went to the Parkland Theater to see a local production of The Little Prince. As the aviator in the play, I was playing a man who, in a very short time, had learned so much about life from a little boy. In the case of The Little Prince, the little boy's time on Earth seemed very short as he had to leave me to get back to his planet in the stars with the sheep I had given him so that he could protect his precious rose. It is with Danny in mind then, um, who was a little prince to so many of us, that I return to the closing monologue of the play. It has already been six weeks since my friend went away from me with his sheep. And I've never yet told anyone about this story until today. I've got a selfish reason for telling you, though. It's so I don't forget him. To forget a friend is sad. And not everyone has had a friend. And if I were to forget him, I might once again become like the grown-ups. It's true, you know. He kept his promise. At night, I love to listen to the stars because, to me, they actually do sound like 500 million little bells ringing and watching over me. But there is one extraordinary thing. You see, I realized that I never gave him a strap for the muzzle, so he could never fasten the muzzle to his sheep. And so now I just keep wondering, what if the sheep has eaten his rose? At one time I say to myself, well, surely he watches over his sheep very carefully. And then, there is laughter in the stars. But at another time I say, perhaps the sheep got out of the box. And then I wonder. And then I worry. You see, no chrono will understand that this question is so important. This, to me, is the loveliest and the saddest landscape in the world. Esta es para mí el paisaje más hermoso y el más triste del mundo. It is here that the little prince appeared on the earth and disappeared. Look carefully so that you will be sure to recognize it if you travel someday to the Mediterranean Sea. And if you do, and if you come upon that spot, please don't hurry on. Just, just stay for a time, exactly in that place. And then, if a little man should appear, who laughs, who has brown hair, and who insists on asking lots of questions, well, you all know who he is. And if that should happen, please let me know he has come back.